welcome back to the Tunnel of Doom. So here we're going to do a quick paper four. It's the legacy stuff. It's the same thing, only slightly different. I'll tell you what to miss out if the question comes up. So let's have a look at the paper. So again, it says there's a radioactive isotope of carbon fourteen. This is the same. Remember we talked about the suit on Santi's suit. You shan't for some people. Same atomic number, different atomic mass. The bog standard suit and Santi suit is that one. Same atomic number, different atomic mass. So this is an isotope of that. Complete the table below to show the number of particles in the nucleus. Now this is, remember, P, E, N. Protons. And also remember, A cross zebra. That tells me the number of protons. Six. There must be six electrons. And there's 14 nucleons, of which there's six protons, so there must be eight neutrons. Three marks for that. Fair enough. Now, look at this. Four marks. There's ten marks in the first question. Beta particle. Remember, not E minus one. That's six. So that must be seven. Seven and minus one gives you six. And that must be fourteen. Fourteen and nine gives you fourteen. Four marks for that. One, two, three, four. If you don't know the symbols for alpha, beta and gamma, fool. Let's look at the next question. Uh, here's me doing the tape on do. What name is given to the point through which the whole weight of an object appears direct? COG, centre of gravity. The photograph shows how a martial arts expert stands during a competition. Give two reasons. Right, low, low centre of gravity, low COG, uh, also um, tipping point, tipping points far apart. So, right, turn the page. Right, so let's have a look at this. Year 11, double award physics. Bad news yet, scrapped. Story of my life, a day late and a dinner short. You know, see now, and then I put myself too. So, let's have a number four. Now, Laura goes jogging each day. Well, far. Below is the distance time graph. So it's a distance time graph. So there are two things. Slope is speed to distance at a certain time right distance at a certain time so it's in meters um, wait here in seconds I've checked all them things so the unit will be the y unit over the x unit so that's going to be meters per second so let's see if we do the question might have to read off into the ruler, so how long is Laura at rest? I have to read off of the ruler. So let's read off of the ruler. There's 80, and there's 200. So as long as she's at rest, because she's not moving there, no gradient, not moving, stopped. This is a distance time graph, remember? The slippy examiner. So the answer is 120. 200 take away 80. During which time interval A, B, B, C is she travelling fastest? Now, the slope is the speed. Which one of them is the greatest slope? A to B, B to C is no slope. So, And C to D is its, look, that's its gradient. So C to D is the fastest. C to D, greatest gradient. Now again, look, two lines. Full sentence. You shortcut it, you'll maybe lose the mark. Kill little Laura's average speed. So again, three marks here for the lovely Laura. Average velocity is total distance over total time. One mark gained. See if you don't know it, no marks gained. You lose three. So what was our total distance? Go back. Now be careful. There's our total distance. It's 240. Reading the middle ruler. What's the time? 280. Total distance. 
240 over total time 280 get the old calculator out throughput 240 divided by 280 0.857 I would also take no, no I wouldn't do it rightly you can put in the fraction you want it's meters per second so we're elected we're 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 right the student states the following after two half lights the radioactive substance have passed its activity is zero now the half life the radioactive after two t a halves the activity would be one quarter what should it state we should copy this out after two half lives the radioactive substance have passed its activity is one quarter of the original. Yes. What they're saying is half it disappears and then it disappears again. It doesn't do that. And remember, it doesn't disappear. It changes. Oh, sweet heavens. The graph below shows the radioactivity of one gram of carbon changes with time and dead remains of a once living material. A bit like myself. It changes because of the radioactivity K of carbon-14. Some of you out there is only dating you're going to get this carbon-14. Uh, not the very well. Use the graph to show the half-life of carbon-14 is approximately 550 years. So that's 16. So the half of that's going to be 8. So look, construction line. With a, see the construction line? There's one. And down... And there you are. Where's it there? That's 5,000. That's 5,200, 5,400. 5,400 years, right? I can do no more. I'm not going to tell a lie. In 1985, the human body was found in the peat bog of England. Archaeologists called them peat marsh. What a great sense of humour those archaeologists had. The radioactivity of one gram of carbon from his body was measured to be nine counts per minute. After accounting for background activity, use the graph to find as accurately as possible when did he die. Right, when's nine? And again, look. There's eight, there's ten, there's nine. So carefully, put accuracy here and down. See that? There's the nine. So the construction's one, and I got that, and the answer is the second. That's 4,000, 5,000, 4,200, 4,400, 4,600, no, 4,500. 4,500 years. Yes? Nearly as old as me. Calculate the activity of one gram of carbon from Pete 1,100 years after his death. Oh, that's not like that. Well, Activity of one gram of carbon, 1100 years. Oh, that's lovely, it's not right. Right, well, we're saying, let's draw the table. Activity. It starts off at 16. Where am I getting the data from? There. Right. Time. Half life. So the activity was 16 at no time, and that was how many years? 5,500 years. It'll be 8. Oh, hang on. That's no time. It'll be 8 at 5,500 years. That's one half life. It'll be 4. That's 11,000 years. That's two half life. Look. Put this into focus. That's two half lives. That's not one half life, two half lives. It'd be four. Four. Four counts per minute. Where to get it? Not at 16. Not at 16. The half lives 5,500 years. 
That's going to be two half lives. One half life is going to be eight, two half life is four. See the table? Foolproof. Next question. Velocity at hand graph. Three things. Write it down. Velocity at time. Two. Slope is acceleration. And three. Area is displacement. Happy days. See if you don't know that, you can't do the question. The velocity at hand graph below represents the motion of a sprinter during a practice run. This could be me. Calculate the acceleration during the first four seconds. So the acceleration is the slope. So let's work out the slope. Acceleration is slope. Now a name for slope. Gradient. How do you work it out? Rise over a run. We mark for that. Now it tells you. What's the rise? Look, the rise. There's it there. See that? Rise. 12 over 4. 3. 3 metres per second squared. One, two, three. Put that in. Calculate the distance run by the sprinter in ten seconds. So there's two areas. Area enclosed. Now again, do you see this one here? Three marks. So area enclosed. I know there's a triangle and a rectangle. And the triangle that's four and that's twelve. I know that's 12, now be careful, that's 6, you see that, slippy examiner again, couldn't trust on my bag of sweets, so that's 6, so half the base but perpendicular, so it's a half times 4 times 10, 10 to 4, that's 20, plus 6 12s, I have 6 12s, 72 but just 6 by 12, 72, is equal to 92 metres. Strange distance. I think it was going to be 100 metres, but it's 92 metres. Did I give me three marks? One, two, three. We're given the information about three balls below, so it's three newtons. That's 0 0.3 kilos. Where are we getting this? W equals M by G. Lead ball, 3.5 kilos, 35 newtons. Child's football, 0 0.5 kilos. No more facts, has 5 newtons. Right? Tell me the mass of the three balls. Now, they're looking at the mass of the three balls in kilos. So, the wooden ball, 0 0.3. The lead ball, is 3.5. And the child's football, not 0.5, so that's 4.3, 4, 4.3, 4 on the next one, which ball if any will hit the bottom of the container first, they all hit at the same time, where is that, they will hit the bottom at the same instant, Galileo's famous experiment on the Leonin Tower of Pisa, When the electric drill develops that many, look, oh, slippy by, that's 1,250 watts of power drilling a hole in the wall. The drill does that many joules. Calculate how long it takes. Power equals energy over time. Mark for that. Now, look, four marks for this one. Time equals energy over power. See if you don't know how to rearrange this. Here the clown, 12. 2 is equal to 12 over 6. So 6 is equal to 12 over 2. You need to know the formula. So what's the energy? 150,000 over the power. You see the 1250 watts, joules, seconds. Watts, joules, seconds. There's some lucky teacher getting out of school. Divided by 120 seconds. 120 seconds. What name is given to the nuclear process which takes place in the core of a nuclear reaction? 
Fission. Again, you give a full sentence. The fuel used in the nuclear power station is often an isotope of uranium. Describe briefly what happens to the uranium nucleus in a power station. Splits into two later nuclei plus three neutrons. What name is given to the nuclear star fusion? What element is is the fuel used in stars? Hydrogen, but remember deuterium and tritium. And you have to know the equation for that. And I told you to learn it, and I'm not doing it. In 2010, in 1910, I think I was late then, a historic experiment was carried out to find it more about the structure of an atom. In the experiment, alpha particles were directed at a very thin gold foil. This is the Rutherford famous experiment. Most of the alpha particles passed through, some of them with no deviation, some with small deviation. Few particles were deflected back towards the source of alpha particles shown in the diagram below. Right, so some of them sort of, some, one in 8,000 bounced back. Explain what this experiment tells about the charge of nucleus. The charge of nucleus is positive. Why? Because it's got protons. Two sentences. Explain your answer. Protons. Protons are positive. They are only found in the nucleus. Which observation indicates the nucleus is small? Most pass through. Or little deviation. Either of those will do. Which observation suggests the mass of the nucleus is much greater than the mass of the alpha particle? Let me see. Well, the answer is the alpha particles were deflected back Oh, look what we have now. The diagram really shows you uniform plank, that means the centre of gravity, the weight's in the centre of it. Now, on a pivot, a load of 450 newtons is placed 90 centimetres from the pivot. The weight of the plank is acting 50 centimetres from the pivot. Use the principle of moments. Now, let's have a look. The weight of the plank makes it go clockwise. The load makes it go anti clockwise. Now, if it's balanced, remember, for uh, moments about a point clockwise sum of clockwise moments equals sum of anti clockwise moments assuming it's in equilibrium you learn it I don't have to know it so we're going to say anti clockwise moment is equal to clockwise moment force by distance force 450 by well we'll keep it in centimeters by 90 is equal to force weight of the plank and this is force look just call it W times 50 now get the calculator down force by distance is equal to force by distance conservation uh, uh, moments so 450 by 90 is 40500 is equal to W times 50 now I've rearranged this a couple of times I'll do it again 4500 over 50 is equal to W. So divide that by 50. You get 10. So you get 10 is equal to the weight of the plank. If I want, it looks a bit right. So some of the anti clockwise moments, some of the clockwise moments. An electric motor uses 300 joules of electric energy to raise up mass of 5 kilos to a height H. The efficiency is 0.8. I'll finish this after.